Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft! I'm back with another video for you guys and up until now I've done a pretty good job of holding off on doing challenge videos because I find them a little cheesy sometimes but today I cave and I'm going to be painting the Reaper Bones 5 dragon model called Shavernra the Slayer and I'm going to be painting her as she was always intended to be a beautiful blue dragon. So you may be thinking to yourself, Alistair, that sounds like a super standard project, where's the challenge come in? Well, I'm going to be painting this whole model while being harassed by a 10 week old puppy. Hello everyone, this is Theoden, newest member of the Hall of Craft and king of this condo. Don't let his docile appearance now fool you, he's had a vaccine and is a very sleepy boy. But all throughout this project, he was a menace. Don't look at the bags under my eyes. Let's just jump right into it. Now the first thing I did off camera was just assemble and prime the model. This involves using Milliput to smooth out any gaps, then priming the whole model black and highlighting from above with white paint. What I've also done here is intentionally leave the wings separate from the rest of the model. The wings are quite big and they droop down over the back of the model. And if I had attached them now, it would make them pretty difficult to paint those areas that the wings are interacting with. So I figured be better, I'd get a better result if I left them all separate and then attached them afterwards once everything's painted. Another thing I did is I created a nice handle for myself to hold the model with here. This is just using a medicine container filled with rocks and then some sculpting wire and hot glue uh, attached to the connection points on the model. So I wanted to take this opportunity to practice my airbrushing skills and this model seemed like the perfect opportunity because it's big and should mostly be one color. That way I can focus on getting some nice creamy blends and flawless transitions without having to worry so much about switching out the colors in my airbrush and trying to avoid areas and overspray. To start and get a really nice shadow color to base my blues on top of, I'm going to start out by using Carnival Purple. And I will just spray that on the underside of the model and in all of the shadowy areas of the scales. After I'm happy with that, I'll switch over to Void Blue. This is where that purple really pops off. I love the transition between these two colors. I'll just paint the Void Blue as a thin base coat over all of the scaled areas. After that's dry, I'll mix in some Oceanic Blue. I'll just mix that into the pot with the Void Blue and then start building up these highlighted transitions. Focusing on the raised areas like the top of the back, the neck, head, and also picking some center mass areas on the legs and tail to really make them pop. I have also been painting the wings at the same time with the same colors just to make sure everything looks consistent. Now I'm going to use some pure oceanic blue and focus those highlights a little smaller in those areas that I just defined previously. That's looking really good, but in order to make Shivanra really pop, I need to make some of these highlights really dramatic. So I'm going to take a big jump in the brightness of my color and use spectral glow. I'm just going to mix this into my already blue mixture in the airbrush and focus it intentionally on the areas that I want to be the brightest. Being really intentional and slow about where I spray this and how much I spray, I'm aiming for high contrast, which means I need to keep a lot of my midtones and shadows intact. That's what's really going to sell this brightness. Okay, so that's all for the airbrush. We've got a really nice blue base coat now, and we can bust out the wet palette and brushes to really zone in on these details. Since Shavinra is clearly modeled off the D&D Dragon Anatomy, I'm using the art in the D&D 5e Monster Manual for the Ancient Blue Dragon as reference, uh, and loosely trying to replicate what's going on there. And that dragon has a lot of brown yellow tones on the belly and in the wings. So I'm going to base coat all of the horns, claws, and talons with bone shadow. Before I finish that, I figure I should probably paint the flesh of the mouth before I paint the teeth to avoid making mistakes. For this, I'm going to mix runic purple with monster maw. This gives me a really nice monster flesh color and it contrasts the blue very nicely. I spend a bit of time here building up the highlights by using more of the pure monster maw and then re-establishing my shadows by glazing in some runic purple again. Eventually, to make the flesh look wet, 
and have the highlights really pop, I mix in some white paint and dot it in on the highlighted areas. This helps the flesh of the mouth look nice and juicy. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go back and highlight these blue scales. I'm gonna bust out my makeup brushes, along with Oceanic Blue, Spectral Glow, and Dragon White. Mixing these three colors, I can build up the highlights on the areas I established with my airbrush in a way that's really gonna catch those edges and make all of the details really pop. I'm imagining tackling this almost like you would approach a non-metallic metal effect, where the shadows are nice and dark, but the highlights are very close to white, very, very bright, and the transition between those colors is what actually makes the surface look reflective. I'm also being very intentional about making sure that the head stays the brightest area of the model. Not just because it is the highest up vertically and closest to the light source, but also because it is the focus of the model and that's where you really want people to be looking when they first pick it up and hold it in their hands. While I'm painting these colors, I also do a test fit of the wings while I dry brush their highlights, just to make sure that I'm putting those highlights in the proper areas. Now, I'm gonna use Dragon nightshade thinned with water on my wet palette and a very carefully with my brush I'll paint that into all of the recesses and shadowy areas on the blue scales. This is going to establish those shadows a little bit more and help add even more contrast between the highlight areas and the dark areas, really making all of those scales and the details pop and, and come right to the forefront. Here's what that looks like when it's dry. I am completely in love with this color scheme at this point in the paint job. Shivanra is like the embodiment of lightning at this moment. But now it's time to bounce back to these bone areas. For this, I'm going to be mixing various combinations of these three colors. Candlelight Yellow, Skeleton Bone, and Desert Sand. I'll start out by just using the Desert Sand as a mid-tone on all of the bone areas. I'm going for decent coverage, but keeping it out of the recesses and shadowy areas intentionally. Once that's dry, I'll paint a second thin coat of Desert Sand, but this time moving it in a little bit, painting a little bit less, a little bit less coverage, just to get a good transition from dark to light on these bone areas. Once that's dry, I'm going to switch back to my makeup brushes, and I'm going to start overbrushing highlights in. I'm using Desert Sand as a base color and mixing Skeleton Bone in to brighten it up, but also adding some of my yellow to keep it nice and saturated. I keep repeating this process each time making my paint mixture slightly brighter and brighter using less paint on my brush and turning it more of a dry brush technique instead of an overbrushing technique and then focus, focusing those highlights onto a smaller and smaller area of the bone sections. Another trick I did here to help the piece feel nice and unified and cohesive was if there is a highlight on a particular section of the blue scales the area that is uh, around that for the bones is also going to be highlighted. And if there's a shadowy area of the scales, the bone area in that proximity is also gonna be shadowy. This just helps it feel really cohesive and look really like you knew what you were doing when you painted it. Eventually, I began mixing in some dragon white for the brightest version of these highlights. Once I'm happy with those highlights, I'm gonna bust out seraphim sepia. Seraphim sepia. Never said that out loud before. Seraphim sepia. Anyway, just like I did with the Dragonhof Nightshade, I'm going to thin it down with water on my wet palette and paint it into the shadows and recesses intentionally of the bone areas. I'm just painting small sections of bone at a time, then cleaning my brush off quickly with water and soaking up any pooling areas of the wash before it dries. In the past, I have approached steps like this by just coating the whole area that needs the wash with the wash and then going back and kind of trying to wipe off any pools uh, afterwards with a wet brush. I find it much better. You get a much cleaner, much more controlled result if you pick small sections and do those at a time. Uh, coating the whole model, you're much more likely to have areas dry before you notice them. And then you kind of get like pooling and coffee stained areas on your model. It just looks a little bit more sloppy. Picking small areas at a time has really, really benefited my paint jobs. Anyway, using this wash really helps clean up a lot of the dustiness that we were getting from the dry brushing on the bones, especially on the belly. To paint the eyes, I'm going to use a mixture of candlelight yellow, golden glow, 
and white. This is gonna help me get a really nice bright, almost glowing yellow eye, but not doing any kind of like glowing effect on it. Just having it nice and bright and, and giving it a lot of dimension. To start, I'll just base coat the eye with white. And then once that's dry, I will go back and glaze in the brighter and brighter mixes of my two yellows until I'm happy with the look. Then in classic eye painting fashion, I just get a drop of black on my brush, hold my breath, and then paint the pupils. Being conscious of painting the eyes so that they are looking forward and not just putting the pupil in the middle of the eye so that you have a cross-eyed dragon looking in two different directions at the same time. So the last two parts of this model that we need to paint are the flaps of the wings and the base. Now I painted these chronologically simultaneously but in order to try and save you whiplash I'm just gonna focus on them one at a time. So let's do the wings first. Now here's actually where I lose my way a little bit in the process. I was so absolutely thrilled with what I'd done up until this point on the model and I, I was a little hesitant, uh, didn't have quite as much of a plan or inspiration about what to do with the wings. I knew from my reference of the 5e monster manual that they're a similar color to the claws and the belly and the teeth, uh, but I didn't want to use the exact same colors because I thought that it would look a little weird if these like hard rigid bone areas are the exact same colors as what should be kind of like a leather wing flaps. So I decided to use leather tones for the wings. This would help me keep those yellowy tone undertones but still have kind of like a somewhat different brown that's not going to look exactly the same. So I started by base coating all of the flaps with rich leather. Once that was dry, I started dry brushing highlights with mixes of tanned leather and leather white. This made sense in my head, but once I really started putting the colors on the wings, I found that uh, it wasn't quite white working the way that I wanted it to. It started looking very dusty because I was dry brushing it and maybe being a little bit careless, but just the colors themselves were looking very different from the colors on the rest of the model. It felt like the flaps of the wings belonged to a different creature. Uh, and I kind of was worried about it and wondered if I should change my strategy, but I figured maybe this is one of those uh, painting steps, kind of like non-metallic metal, where it looks like crap until it's finished, and when it's finished it looks great. Uh, but that was kind of the message that pushed me forward and I, I kind of like got my way through it with that kind of motivation, but it didn't turn out to be the case. And once I had finished, I thought they still looked dusty and I thought they still looked out of place. I had nice transitions from dark to light, but the colors I chose and the way that I applied them, probably not the ideal outcome I was looking for. And especially when you compare it to how happy I was with all of the rest of the model, I felt like it really stuck out. But I thought that it might be salvageable. So I busted back out the Seraphim Sepia wash and thinned that down with water and then just drenched the wings with it. All of the flaps got a full coat of the wash. After that was dry, I took a look at it and it seemed to be working. It did a pretty good job of kind of smoothing out that dustiness and making these look more alive. So I did it again and I did another second thin coat of the Seraphim Sepia all over the whole leather flaps of the wings. And this actually did quite a lot of work to steer these flaps back in a direction that I was happy with. But while I was dry brushing them, I got a little bit sloppy and at this point I kind of noticed it. So I busted back out my blues and just went back to clean up the stalks of the wings. And while I was doing this, I had an idea. I think that the colors and tones of the wings are looking really good right now, but I could do a little bit more to tie it into the rest of the dragon uh, and make sure that it felt really in place. The, the leather of the wings belonged to the same dragon as the stalks and the body and the horns. So using some more thinned Drakenhof Nightshade, I painted that along the stalks of the wings and then pulled it away from the stalks into the shadowy areas of the flaps. And this did a really good job of darkening those areas because that wash is very dark, but it also really tied it in and helped transition from the browns to the blues uh, of the wash to the lighter blues of the stalks of the wings and made it feel like they belonged to the same creature. And it also just gave them this really just 
intense profile that I was really digging. Now that I was finally happy with the wings, I figured it was time to attach them to the body. So this model actually is built in such a way that the wings have really sturdy connection points. The stock is really sturdy and substantial, the hole is a good size for it to fit into, and the way that the model's built, they, they actually rest on the shoulders of it, so it, gravity's not like fighting to pull it apart. So I didn't feel like I needed to pin it here, and I just used uh, glue. I just painted the interior of the recess with accelerant, and then coated the uh, stock of the wing with super glue and pressed it into place as best I could. Now that the wings are painted and secured to the body, I just want to clean up that gap where they meet. So I'm going to take a thin strip of milliput and then using water and my sculpting tools, I will press and massage it into place to fill the gap and smooth out the transition. Once that's cured, I don't even prime it, I just repaint that milliput with the blues, same blues as I used before, until that transition is looking nice and natural. I was a little bit intimidated about doing this, worried that I wouldn't be able to get as good of a look as I did with the airbrush with just my brush and that the transition would stick out like a store like a sore thumb but actually it turns out just fine in the end and I'd rather have kind of a sloppy paint transition than like a big divot or hole that really just reveals that this is like a multi-piece model and I was lazy putting it together. Okay, wings are done and attached. Now it's all about that base, baby. And I've got plans for this thing. So Shivanra's base here is kind of like a desert stone pride rock shaped thing. And it's pretty cool. A lot of nice textures on it. So in order to get a nice good desert rock, I'm going to base coat it with mahogany brown. This is a nice reddish brown, so it'll be a good uh, undercoat to show through in the shadow areas. Once that's dry, I'm gonna dry brush the crap out of this thing with golden brown and ivory craft paints. Trying to catch all of the edges and focus my highlights at the tip of Pride Rock. Once that's looking good, I get mix in some vanilla craft paint to my dry brushing to get some nice dusty highlight areas. Now I'm gonna coat the whole thing in Agrax Earthshade, straight out of the pot. And using a clean brush with just water, I can wipe the Earthshade off of the raised areas while it is still wet. Once it's dry, I'll paint the base rim black. But we're not done yet. No, 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 because every good dragon has a horde. Now a neat thing is that dragons love gems of the color associated to the color of the dragon. So a blue dragon would love sapphires. And I found these at the dollar store. They're like these sapphire colored but also silver bead things. And I also found these tubes of gold beads. I love gold! So using white glue, I'm just gonna start dabbing the base and then placing a gem into that dab. I'm being conscious of where the feet are gonna fall so I don't mess up the foothold of the dragon once I glue it in place. Once I'm happy with the distribution of gems, I'll dab out a bunch more white glue on the area around them and on them, and then I'll start pouring my gold flakes into it. Then I'll flip it upside down and give it a quick tap to drop any extra back onto my parchment paper, and then I let it dry. Once it is dry, I'll take out a makeup brush and give it a good brushing to dislodge any flakes that aren't well adhered. And here I finally cut Shivanra off of her makeshift handle holder so I can give a good test fit on the base. I think we can roll the D100 a little bit higher for this horde. So I'm gonna add a bunch more white glue and drop more sapphires into it. Then just as before, I coat all of that glue with more gold flakes. This time I also added some more dabs of glue back on top of that just to make sure I had some nice shiny sapphires front and center to catch your eye. I'll leave that to dry overnight and then come back the next day and give it a good brush down. Now to seal that all in place, I'm going to drip some liquid super glue on top of it, let that sink in, and then spray it with some accelerant just to make sure that dries before it drips in places I don't want it. Now I can finally attach this beautiful dragon to her luscious face. <laughs> Let's say that. And now I can finally reunite this dragon with her impressive horde and glue her to the base. Same as I did for the wings, I will just brush some accelerant into the recesses, cover the stalks with super glue, and then press the dragon into place on glittery pride rock.
Once that's in place, I'll just paint a second coat of black on the base rim to make sure that it's got really good coverage. And that's the paint job done, except for one final step. In my opinion, it is the homework of every project, coating it in varnish. For this, I just bust the airbrush back out and give the whole model a nice coat of thinned down gloss varnish. Once it's coated, to give it a helping hand and make sure I don't get any weird varnishy pooling areas, I blast the model with air from my airbrush for a few minutes just to smooth out any drops and make sure that it's going into the areas that I want. This ensures that you get a nice even coat without any weird areas. And that's it. We're done the paint job. Here she is in all her beautiful blue glory. Roll the B-roll. And that's it friends, that's all there is to this video. Theo and I would like to thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. Your views and nice comments really mean a lot to us. Don't they? Yes. Tasty fingers. If this is your first time here, I have plenty of other crafting and painting videos <laughs> that you can watch in the meantime while you wait for the next one. I hope you guys have... <laughs> I hope you guys have a fantastic week, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. <laughs> but then we'll get a stuff from in here. Now I can finally attach. <coughs> Whoop. Got a train anyway. Okay, train's gone.